coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your next C++ made easy HD tutorial and in this tutorial you might think is very useless but it is a very useful tutorial and I'm going to be talking about the most underrated or most uncommon data types that you just don't see people using but they are of they have a lot of good uses so let's talk about the unsigned and what unsigned means it, it's, it stands for something that means um, it means that the it's only positive so for example whenever I make an integer and I say integer test what it does is it um, uh, I can put a value a negative value or a positive value and um, so let's just say for example um, the the like the integer for example takes out four bytes in memory but let's just uh, let's just represent four bytes as four zeros for now even though we know that's not how it works but let's just represent it as that so what the what it does is say uh, an integer can um, do a, n a number between a signed integer can go from negative 99 to positive 99 because we have four spaces. So the first space in memory represents the actual sign. So the way variables work, and I'm going to be talking more in depth about uh, bits uh, and stuff on a bit level, but uh, the way everything works in a computer, it works in binary. And a binary number is between one and zero. One means it's on, zero means it's false. It's kind of like a boolean, right? And so the first bit in a, a sign integer means that it gives us a sign. So like say it's one. One will mean that it is a positive number and zero will mean that it's a negative number. And so the first bit means that it is, it gives us a sign. That's why it is called a signed variable right when we say and it, every single variable is signed by default but when we put unsigned before the variable type it removes this and adds in an extra element so instead of representing this last number as a sign it represents that as a number and therefore we get a larger positive number so we get a zero from a larger number essentially so uh, that's what unsigned is so instead of having a negative number it always has to be positive from zero to the max value that we can get and we can find out what that max value is uh, but we won't do that in this tutorial so unsigned is very useful in case for example if we're making a program and we say okay what is your age why do we need to make it a signed int there's no point we're making our range from negative whatever to positive whatever. I've never met anybody on this planet that is negative something years old. They're either zero to whatever age they are. And so instead of making a regular int, you would make it unsigned int. Therefore, it can only be a positive number. And you should use unsigned wherever possible. It makes your program more efficient, more readable. Um, programmers understand it more when you use unsigned. Now, integer an integer is four is four bytes, and I wasn't going to teach about this right now. But what you can do is if you do scdcl and you do size of, and you do yeah, so we do size of int. If you do that, oh. It opened and closed too much, too fast. If I do Control F5, it says four. So by using the size of command, it can do more stuff than that. But basically, what the size of does is get the size of something. So um, the getting the size of an integer, it is four bytes in memory. And uh, if I do the size of a short, which I'm going to be talking about in a moment and we do it it's only two bytes now um, that's a good thing because if we're asking for somebody's age most likely nobody's gonna live past 100 or whatever or maybe 110 or 120 or whatever 
And so why do, if we're asking for somebody's age and we create an int, when we create an integer and then sign integer, it allocates the amount of memory that we need in the amount of space we need in the memory. Now it's allocating four bytes and not even close to all those four bytes are gonna be used. So what we wanna do to save space and to increase speed, we put short, which is only two bytes. Since we're not we're not gonna be utilizing all of this short uh, all of the short data space, but it's better to use two bytes when you need two bytes rather than using four bytes when you don't need it. So a short is basically equal to, what a short is defined as is equal to the same amount of bytes as an integer or smaller. It's guaranteed to, be, guaranteed to be smaller or equal to an int. It will not be larger. In some, um, in some consoles maybe, or in some OSs, a short might be four bytes, just like the integer. But on Windows, on Windows 8, a short is represented as two bytes. It might vary from operating system to operating system. That brings me to another data type, which is the long data type. Long is means it could be equal to or more than an integer. And if we look at the size of a long in Windows 8, and we run this, it is the same as the integer now. So now the long is the same as the integer, but if you ever needed in the future, wanted to allocate more data than the actual integer, then you could use the long because it's guaranteed to be equal, either, sorry, equal to an integer or more than an integer. The last one is a long, long. And if we do say a long, long int, that is a 64-bit integer. And I know they could have probably come up with another way to describe it, but a long, long int, if we look at it, and we run it and we see the size of it, it's actually 8 bytes, which is the same length as a double. So if you needed more space than what a long gives you, or what an int gives you, you could use a long, long int, and that will give you eight bytes to give you more space and memory, but you're probably not gonna need that. But anyways, uh, that's it for this tutorial. I just want to show you some uncommon data types that could be fairly useful. And uh, if you have any questions, don't, don't be afraid to comment below. So that's it, and bye for now.